Hello, my name's John, and I'm a storyteller. I love stories. I hope you do as well. And I've got lots of wonderful stories to tell you. I've actually produced a website with all these stories on www.biblestorycards.co.uk. You can see all my stories. I'm also a bit of a painter. And so I paint pictures to help me tell my stories. I hope you enjoy them. Hello everybody. It's John again. And as you would imagine, by now if you've listened to the other stories, I've got another one of my fantastic stories. In actual fact, today, I want to link three stories together because it's all about the same person just to show you how God was looking after him you see his name was David and of course you know about David don't you for that great battle he had with the giant Goliath and how he killed him just with a stone from his sling or his catapult or whatever it was and uh, well of course King Saul was there King Saul was the biggest and strongest man in the whole country and he ought to have been brave enough to have gone uh, and fought with Goliath the giant. But instead it was young David the shepherd boy who went and he said to, to this Goliath, he said, you've come to me with your sword and your spear and your shield but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts the God of heaven whom you were def defying and, uh, and, and scorning. And I will give your head to the, to the birds of the air today. And of course, Goliath thought this was so funny, he roared with laughter and he lifted his helmet up and, uh, and, and, and raised his head to the sky. And just at that point, David took his opportunity to put the stone in the sling and sling it round and fire it as fast as a bullet and it hit Goliath right in the forehead of his temple, of his head and it killed him immediately. And then David ran up and grabbed his sword and, bit gory this, bit gruesome, chopped off his head. And at that the Philistine army of whom Goliath was the champion all ran and fled with fear and the Israelite army conquered them. And that was David. And immediately, of course, King Saul was jealous of David because all the ladies started singing a song, singing about David, and they all sang, ah, well, I don't know what the tune was, but they all sang, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands. And King Saul was jealous of that and thought, if I'm not careful, will he take, a, take up my position in this, in this uh, land? And then I'll be in trouble. I'd better get him into the palace and get him near me so I can keep my eye on him. So that's what he did. Now what he didn't realise at the time was that David was a beautiful musician. He used to sit in the field as a shepherd playing his harp to, to his sheep and calming them down and uh, inventing songs and the Bible is full of the songs that David invent, invented we call them Psalms of course and you know the most famous one the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want well I suppose he was thinking of himself being a shepherd looking after his sheep and how God looked after him well anyway as time went by, Saul, King Saul used to get these terrible black moods on himself. Really, he'd, he'd get really angry and really depressed. And, uh, and he would break out in a rage. And when this happened, David would just sit quietly playing his harp. And Saul's temper would calm down and he would sit and be quiet. And sometimes he would lull him to sleep with his songs. So David was very useful in King Saul's palace because David was a man of faith 
and a man of obedience to God and a man who worshipped God not like King Saul who had no time for that kind of thing anyway David got a, a good friendship with King Saul's son Jonathan who would have normally inherited the kingdom he would have been the next king but you see David had already been anointed by by Samuel the prophet who told him that you will be the next king and Jonathan knew this and uh, he, he said to David once he said look I know you are going to be king next well I'll be second in command you can be the king because you're worthy to be the king you are God's choice and when King Saul heard that Jonathan had a friendship with David he got one of his black moods on him. Would you believe it? He picked, up a, uh, uh, he picked up a javelin. And he was going to throw it at his son and kill him. And he called him uh, a, a really bad name. And, uh, 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 and, and Jonathan had to run out from David's, from, from Saul's palace. And uh, he said to David, look David, when my father gets a mood on and he starts to think about attacking you and killing you, I will, I will tell you, I'll get a message to you and you will be safe. Well, it happened that Saul with his army started going through the country trying to find out where David was so he could kill him. And David fled to the mountains and, and the caves uh, because... He knew that Saul was going to, going to attack him. But just before that happened, Saul sent his soldiers to surround the house where David was. And David's wife was, was, was a lady called Micah. And, uh, and she knew these people were outside the, the, the house. And they said to her, bring him out. The, command, the king's command is bring him out. We're going to destroy him. But she was a very clever and, and, and cunning person. And so she'd, in David's bed, she'd put some pillows a, a, along the length of the bed. And she'd put a mop with, with what looked like hair sticking out at the top. And so um, she said to them, well, look, he's poorly, he's in bed, can't you see? Right, they said, we'll take the bed out as well. So they picked up the bed and carried it out. And it wasn't until they got outside that the mop fell out. And they realised they'd, they'd been tricked and cheated. And David escaped and ran into the hills. But of course, Saul pursued him. And there was one time when, when David realised that Saul, with his hundreds of soldiers, was, was, was the other side of this mountain... And David was on one side of the mountain and there was a cave there. And so David said to his few men that were with him, let's go in the cave and we'll hide in the cave and then Saul will never catch us. But would you believe it? Saul and his men went round the mountain to the side where the cave was. And Saul said... I'm so tired, I need to go and lie down. I'm going to go in the cave and have a lie down. The very cave where David and his men were hiding, Saul went in. And you would have thought, oh, that's it, he's had it now. He's been ambushed. But Saul lay down and fell asleep. And then one of David's men said to him, Don't you see, David? God has helped you and he's given your enemy into your hands now you can rise up and kill him let me do it and David said he's God's anointed king I mustn't lay a hand on him I mustn't do anything to him tell you what give me a knife and David crept up to where he saw was asleep and he got the end of his cloak and he cut the corner off the cloak and then when Saul woke up and his men and they went out of the cave and they got quite a distance away down the valley. David came out of the cave and he shouted after Saul and he said, 
My master, he said, don't listen to those evil men that tell you that I am going to kill you. I, I wouldn't lay a hand on you. Do you see? You've just been in that cave and I was in the cave too and you didn't know I was there. And you see what I've got in my hand? Look at your garment, look at your robe, he said. And Saul looked down at his robe and there's the corner of the robe was missing and it was in David's hand up there on the mountain. And Saul suddenly had a change of heart and he said, Oh, David, he said, please forgive me. I, I, I thought that you were against me, but I realise now you could have killed me if you'd wanted to. No, I wouldn't do that You are the God, if you were God's anointed, he said. Well, said Saul, I realise now that one day you're going to be my successor. You're going to be king. And so Saul left David alone for a while. David had gone up into uh, a, a small town where there was the... Do you remember me telling you about the, 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 the tent called the, the, uh, the, the, the tabernacle where they used to worship God and there was a priest there and his name was Abimelech and he had a number of men with him, mostly his family. And David came there uh, Abimelech didn't know what it was about, but David said to him, well, me and my men need some food to, to, to eat. Uh, have, have you got any food? And uh, he said, well, I've only got the bread, the special bread that we put out as a sacrifice to God. Um, I've got that. They called it the show bread. That's all I've got. David said, that will do, that will do, can you give me that? So Abimelech gave David the showbread. Now said David, look, I came without my weapons. Because he didn't have any weapons, really. But he said, you haven't got any weapons, have you? And Abimelech said, well, I've got one sword here. It's the sword that belonged to Goliath, do you remember? Why, said David, it's the best sword in the land. Can you give me that as well? So he gave it to David and David and his men went off and didn't think any more about it. But you know, David had just put Abimelech's life in danger because there was a man standing there whose name was Doig and he was a servant of King Saul and he saw everything that went on. And he went straight to Saul and said to Saul, I know where David is. And I know that Abimelech the priest has helped him and given him food and given him uh, weapons. So King Saul, in a fit of rage and jealousy, sent for Abimelech and all his family, 70 of them. And they all came to the palace. And uh, Saul said, you wicked man, you are helping my enemy, David, giving him food and giving him a weapon. Why, said Abimelech, I didn't know anything about this. I didn't know what he was doing. He said he'd come on a journey. So he said, I I'm, I'm innocent. I I'm not against you, King Saul. Oh, yes, you are, said Saul. Now then. You people standing by, my soldiers, kill a lot of them. Murder them. Well, none of, his, none of his soldiers would do it. Except one. Guess who that was? Doeg. And he pulled out his sword and he started killing Abimelech and his sons. And all the members of his family until all 70 of them were dead. What a wicked thing to do. But it was Saul who was wicked for telling him to do it, wasn't it? David had escaped. But it was at the cost of the lives of those innocent people. Well, then there was another occasion. Let me tell you this about David. Whilst he was up roaming about the mountains... He came across another man, 
And the man he came across, the, 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 the workers of this man, well, he, <coughs> he was called Nabal. Actually, he was well named because he was a rogue. He really was a, a, a terrible character. He was cruel. He was selfish. He was greedy. He was mega rich and he had loads of flocks and herds. <coughs> and whilst the flocks and herds were being sheared up there on the mountains, uh, uh, amid the areas where there were bandits and all sorts of things, David's men said, let's get some of these sheep for ourselves. And David said, no, you mustn't do that. That's stealing. We'll protect them against all these rogues and, 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 uh, and, and uh, thieves and, and, and robbers. So um, David, uh, all David's men spent a lot of time just guard, laying guard over the flocks and herds of this man uh, and uh, he was married with a beautiful wife he was a big slob of a man really overweight and because he used to eat too much all the time just a terrible man a drunkard really always drinking and uh, <coughs> his wife was a lady called Abigail it's amazing how she had got married to a man like that, but maybe he got more and more wicked as time has gone by. But anyway, uh, David sent half a dozen of his men to, uh, to Nabal and, and said to him, you know, whilst your shearers were up on the hills there, uh, my men protected them and kept them from harm. Now I'm... I know it's your your feast day today. Uh, you've done all your shearing, and, and I wonder if if it was possible for us for you to spare some of some of your food for my men, and uh, uh, and 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 we would be very grateful if you could. And uh, he, you know, he f he flew into a rage, and he said. Who is this fellow David? I don't know him anyway. There's loads of people leaving their masters these days and fleeing into the mountains. I'm not giving him any of my stuff. I've worked hard for it. And he didn't pay any attention to the fact that David had helped him and helped his men. So he sent David's men away and they, they ran for fear of their lives. And when they came back to David, David said, David suddenly got anger in his own mind and heart and he said, after all I've done for that foul man, well, he's not going to get away with this. Come on men, get your swords on and follow me. We'll take vengeance on this wretched man. And David flew into a rage and his men all got ready with their armour and they walked after David and they went straight to Nabal's house. But Abigail heard what had happened and Abigail thought, oh my stupid husband, what has he done? He's going to bring danger on all of us and, and, and David, who's one day going to be the king, he's going to have this sort of blot on his conscience if he's committed the murder of my husband and uh, our, our men. So she, she got some donkeys together. And she got 200 loaves of bread and, 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 uh, and 30 uh, clusters of, of uh, raisins and uh, f f five sheep that had already been killed and, and, and cut and butchered ready for, for cooking. And she put them on the donkeys and, and she got on one of them herself and she went as fast as she could to, to meet with David. And when she came to David, she got off her donkey and she bowed before him and the earth and she said, Oh, my Lord, my Lord, forgive my foolish husband. He, he's, he's well named as, as a worthless man, Nabal. And uh, he, I, I wasn't there when your servants came. Else I would have given you 
some uh, of the food from our feast. So please, please uh, be lenient and don't do this thing because you'll regret it all the rest of your life, especially when you're the king. And uh, you'll remember the day you got angry and went and murdered this man. And David stopped in his tracks and said, You're a very wise woman. Thank you so much for stopping me. I would have done a very bad thing if you hadn't. God bless you and, uh, and help you as you have helped me. Well, uh, Abigail went back home and there she met Nabal. But by this time, it, it, oh, the party was well in, in, uh, in sway and, and he was drunk as a lord. He was just so uh, inebriated. He was so drunk that he didn't know what he was doing. And she told him what she had done, how she'd sent all this food to David and how she'd stopped him coming. And you know, he flew into a rage. In fact, he had a heart attack. Well, hardly surprising the way he was living. But there and then, he fell down dead. What a thing. So then Abigail went to David and uh, she said to him, My husband, your enemy, is dead. God has looked after you. God has preserved you. God has helped you because you are God's anointed one. Please have mercy upon me. David said, are you without a husband now? Yes, she said. Well, then you can come and be my husband, he said. Come and live with me and I'll look after you and one day you can come and live in the palace with me as queen. Well, you see how God works sometimes and works things out for his people and especially for King David. Once God said about David, I have found a man who is just what I want, who will do everything that I ask him. And David eventually, of course, became that man, the man of God, the man of faith, the man of obedience, and the man of worship. And you know, one day, generations later, someone was born whom they called the son of David. In other words, that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, Jesus became king of his people. And uh, he became our saviour. Good job, David, was obedient uh, and worshipful and full of faith, isn't it? You could be like that if you decided that you wanted to follow Jesus as well. Music